Thanks for staying with us on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Our next conversation would be about NAVDAC and COVID-19 vaccines. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is warning Nigerians to beware of an unregistered and fake insulin tea. The makers say the tea deletes sugar in the body, but NAVDAC says it's dangerous. The agency also says the NAVDAC number on the package of the tea is fake. A former National Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Benga Olubowale, is joining us this morning uh, to talk about the fight to rid Nigeria of fake foods and drugs. Good morning and thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. We know that at a time like this where everybody seems to be interested in you know taking the vaccine even though there was vaccine hesitancy at first because of the controversy regarding coronavirus but we see now that you know there's a lot of turn up for the vaccine and also we know how you know bad diabetes is and just how much it's cost us as a nation so we've seen you know business people try to take advantage of uh, you know the health conditions of others you know the diabetes issue and the coronavirus pandemic I want you to give us a sense of just how much of a danger this would constitute to our health to take a fake coronavirus vaccine or a fake diabetes, you know, cure. Yeah, thank you once again. Um, I would say it's really unfortunate that, uh, you know, uh, we have so much of these uh, wrong things going on in our clients here. And uh, yes, the major concern globally, Hello, Nigeria is not uh, exempted against this pandemic, the COVID-19. How do we get uh, all our, our you know, eligible uh, population quickly vaccinated so that uh, we not have any serious issue of uh, you know, sickness as it is? Currently, Nigeria received just about 3.9 million uh, you know, vaccine from you know, uh, the donor uh, group. This came in on the 2nd of March, and uh, we started active vaccination on the 17th of March. According to NCDC, I mean, uh, we've done a little over half a million uh, vaccination to date, uh, which in itself is not bad. But uh, looking at our large population, I think uh, we need to do much more because uh, while other countries like UK and US are setting already the target of when they want to you know, uh, get their population fully vaccinated, we are just still talking about 3.9 million vaccines that has been received, you know. And uh, of course, this might also be a very good reason why we need to call on the uh, government, particularly the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, who is in charge of the vaccination, to begin to look at how they collaborate with uh, the private sector. Because by the time we receive this huge, other, uh, huge, huge quantity, of the vaccine uh, of the vaccines being expected, the government logistics and capacity might just not be adequate. So, why not begin to look at uh, you know already established private sector and uh, what comes to mind quickly is the community pharmacies which are domiciled within the community, which are, over the years have uh, built up uh, you know a trust. Specifically, back to your questions, I mean yes, it is dangerous, very very dangerous uh, when we are talking about fake vaccine and talking about fake uh, insulin and uh, you know somebody talking about uh, you know uh, a, a tea whether it is herbal or whatever that can cure diabetes this is very strange there is nothing like curing diabetes what you can do is to manage and then ensure that the the, the patient or, or 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 the person involved can live a very fulfilled life as much as possible you know either through medication or through lifestyle changes so talking about a particular tea, and thank God that, uh, you know, uh, NAVDAC has come forth to debunk this uh, very bogus claim. And you see, this is not the first time. It's also a clarion call to our aid, to the regulatory agency, which is NAVDAC. You know, we have a lot of people making spurious and uh, bogus claims about, uh, you know, all manners of nonsense and uh, what have you. You enter the streets, you go into the buses, public buses, go to the market, you see all these my chance of, I call them my chance of death marketing all manners of, you know, things that are not right and slowly killing our population. You understand? The average lifespan of a Nigerian has been put around 50, 
50 years old. This is sad, very sad, extremely sad. And these are some of the things that keeps killing us because when you begin to take all these spurious elements, they lead to what you call organs failure. They begin to kill slowly. And before you know it, somebody will just drop dead and they will say it is the heart of God. No, you have not investigated what causes the death. It could be some of these, you know, uh, advertised in quote products, which are not good for human consumption. So there is a lot for NAVDAC to do. They have to be out there regularly. Wally. I know they are doing so much since the incoming of this new uh, DG, but then there is still so much to be done. So if they need uh, you know, assistance from the government, I know, yes, paucity of funds is a major challenge for the agency. So Ministry of Health, federal government might need to give them more funding and they might need to recruit more hands. They might need to work with more uh, these uh, law enforcement agencies. They might have to have more hotlines where people can reach them when they notice such you know, uh, products in the market so that they can quickly take action. And there is need for them to begin to publicly, publicly announce and display punitive measures. People and parade them as scapegoats. So right. that is it. That is the so, so I want to. I want to ask. Um, and it's a good thing you've already started talking about the work that NAVDAC um, has to do. Um, Dora Kunili was, you know, one person that basically made you know Nigerians see the importance of NAVDAC. Um, you know, some people might argue that uh, the you know the agency has not really been you know as effective you know as you know as that time. But um, you've already started, and I want you to go further with this. If you go around the small markets junctions around Lagos here, you know, and of course around Nigeria, you would see people you know, selling drugs at the, on the roadside. They have their small wheelbarrows. They have their small basket, which they carry, you know, all types of drugs. There's people, of course, who patronize them, and that's why they still have a market. Um, um, ha, that is something I've always been scared, you know, because I know I will never buy a drug there, but I know that there's people who, that, you know, who use that as their source of, um, you know, getting medication. Um, how much work does NAVDAG need to do to rid the country of those um, agents. Um, and also, um, can you really blame the Nigerian if he can't afford to go to the big medicine stores, the big pharmacies, you know, to buy medication for uh, certain ailments? Because, you know, for a fake insulin tea now, very likely it's going to be sold at the roadside, you know, medicine store in the marketplaces where you can buy your drugs really, really cheap. Well, uh, thank you very much. You've said so much, but uh, uh, I, will, I will start by telling you that uh, ignorance is not really an excuse. And uh, you cannot say because uh, the cost of uh, the new medication can be slightly more expensive than all these paraded fake uh, products. And in fact, in many cases too, they tend to match the, the, the price of the original one so that there won't be suspicion in, in, in the real sense. You know, and you cannot say because you're looking at a life-saving element, which are drugs. Drugs are not, you know, they are, they are, they are not uh, supermarket commodities that you can say, okay, well, let me gamble with it. Somebody at the point of death, life and death, needs to be given the proper medication in proper dosage form so that you can revive back this person. But the moment you go acquire the wrong medication, a fake product or a substandard product, you are further endangering the life of this person. So how can we be talking about, you know, uh, cost where life matters? Yes, there is a lot of advocacy, a lot of public awareness that needs to be done for the public to realize that, look, the, 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 the bitterness of uh, cheap products does not last. It does not last. Because at the end of the day, by the time you have paid this small, small, small money, severally, Cumulatively, this thing is huge. If you have gone straight to meet a qualified pharmacist in a community practice, or you go to a clinic to talk to a medical doctor who will understand and diagnose what is wrong with you, and then place you on proper medication, you will realize that by the time you come in, you're already a very bad case. Many of the deaths, many of the critical cases we are seeing, they are preventables, very preventables. But when you don't address them right on time, they become very bad cases, extremely bad cases. So for me, there's no excuses. 
We need more, more of advocacy. We need more of enforcement. On paper, yes, fantastic write-up. Nigerians are good at writing beautiful policies. But when it comes to implementation, it is zero. Okay. Always excuses. Um, it is either this is not there or that is not there. One of the, one of the major issues regarding this is, you know, when we talk about diabetes, we found that Nigeria is, you know, has the worst diabetes statistics in Africa. Four million people, you know, are diabetic in Nigeria out of about 200 million Are people. Huge? And we know that one of the challenges, you know, when it comes to treatment and care for, you know, diseases like this is the fact that many Nigerians pay out of pockets, you know, for care. But in other parts of the world, you have health insurance that helps you. We, you know, we, we know we have the uh, Nigerian National Health Insurance Scheme, but how much are they doing, really? We, we saw them saying, you know, just in February that they need about three trillion naira to provide health insurance for people. How should a national health insurance scheme be? Like, what's the ideal such that we can all ass assess health care from the right sources and not be exposed to, you know, all these ways to cut corners and cut costs that eventually, you know, hurt us? I agree with you, absolutely. Uh, health insurance is actually the way to go. But unfortunately, we have not gotten this right. Over 10 years ago, the National Health Insurance Scheme was inaugurated by the regime of Obasanjo. This is how many years down the line? There have been series and series of fraud in National Health Insurance Scheme. Each time you have a new executive uh, secretary, it is one story or the other. Humongous fraud within the National Health Insurance Scheme. So, Again, the states have said they are coming to the remedy. A lot of the states in the country have also inaugurated their own state's arm of insurance scheme for their own populace. But again, they are using the same template of the National Health Insurance Scheme that has failed. So why is it so difficult for us as a people, as policymakers, to get things right? The various countries you run to, the America, the, the, the Europe, they have these things there for their for their for their for their for, for their populace, and it is working. Out of pocket payment is difficult. Out of pocket payment, of course, we encourage this patronage of all this quack, because our people we believe in quote they are getting cheap product, but that is not true. That is not true. Like I've earlier said, how can we in this modern age, twenty first century, have People parading or hawking medication medicines at bus stops, inside buses, on the streets, making all manners of spurious claims, and we have nobody challenging them. We have no authority challenging them. We have no enforcement taking them off. Well, um, endangering the lives of the people. This is so sad. Uh, uh, Mr. Alubo, well, unfortunately, we have to go now. Um, uh, you know, we, we hope that we can, you know, continue this conversation. You know, there is different angles to this. There is the enforcement angle where NAVDAC needs to step up. And, of course, other agencies of government would need to also be, uh, do better. There is the health insurance aspect where, you know, they also need to do better. And at the, at the same time, there's also poverty. And you can't tell a man who's struggling to feed himself and feed his family that he should go, you know, into a big pharmacy store because he needs to get drugs that, um, you know, um, are... Um, you know, NAVDAC certified. He's going to buy what he can afford at that time. Um, and you can't take that away until you, mm -hmm. you know, deal with po the poverty aspect of it. Those things will always exist. And that's why these little shops and these little medicine hawkers um, will still exist, including the ones selling, um, you know, go-go around those mixes at the roadside mm -hmm. that they say helps cure fever and the, and the but, but I think one thing is, even though we can argue that maybe NAVDA could have done better in terms of enforcement at the border, that to make sure that this tea doesn't even get into Nigeria. We should also give them kudos for the, you know, the, how proactive they were. Remember in Kano a few weeks ago, the citric acid, you know, that people took, they began to have, you know, very severe health challenges and maybe even a few deaths. But this one, there's not been reports of anybody dying or, you know, suffering effects from it. But this is NAVDAC issuing a warning ahead of time to say, don't take this tea. But we can all improve and do better as a Absolutely. nation. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Gbenga Lubowale, uh, former National Secretary from the School Society of Nigeria. Thanks for speaking with us. Yes, have a great day. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much.
All right, stay with us. Uh, we are moving away from fake medication and insulin tea and now to NIMC. There's a new application that should help uh, with the whole NIN registration process and for people to be able to assess their NINs on the go. We'll tell you about that after the short break uh, here on The Breakfast.